another junior beginner class and it's going to be on money. The topics we're going to be covering today are money, currency, coin conversion, and change. So our first topic of today is money. And money is used to measure the value of services and goods. And we can use money to buy and sell those services and goods. So some key words are denomination and currency. Denomination is the value of currency, while currency means the, unit, the different units of money in different countries. Now let's move on to currency. Like we said before, currency is different units of money. And currency comes in many different ways. And these ways are all ways that you can pay for something. So we have coins, which are usually made of metal. We have paper. We have credit cards, debit cards, and so many more. So each country has its own currency. Some countries have the same as other countries, but they're mostly unique. So here are some examples. First, we have the one thing from Malaysia. Okay. Now let's move on to our second topic, which is currency. And like we said before, currency is different units of money. And they can come, into, come through many different ways in which you can use to pay for a good or a service. And coins, which are metal, paper, credit cards, debit cards, and so many more. So here are some examples of currency. This is a one ringgit from Malaysia. Here we have a 10 and a 50. And those are the ones from Malaysia. Those aren't all of them, but there's some of them. Here we have five pesos, or cinco, which is five for Spanish. Yeah, anyways, you can see how there's difference is between how they're made and how they look. And then we have five rupees from India. And then we have our one dollar bill and our five dollar bill. Each of these currencies are all different. Every country, almost every country has its own unique currency. And we'll get onto what they mean later. Here are some examples of our US currency. So for coins, we have our penny, which is one cent, nickel, which is five cents, dime, which is 10, quarter, which is 25, half dollar, which is 50, and one dollar, which is 100 cents. And then we have our paper ones. We have one, two, five, 10, 20, 50, and 100. So now let's move on to coin conversion. And the main thing we're gonna to convert today is a dollar. So a dollar can equal 100 pennies, 20 nickels, 10 dimes, 4 quarters. Now let's move on to change. Change is the money you have left over. And to calculate the amount of change, you can count forwards or backwards. And I'll explain more of that in our example pop. So you buy something for 68 cents, but you pay 3 quarters. I have 3 quarters in my hand right here. It's probably too small to see, but... Anyways, here's a quick fun fact. On the tail side of quarters, there's usually the United States of America eagle seal. And it's super cool. But sometimes you have the state, a state. And it's fun collecting different states and all the other things you can have. For example, two of these are the normal United States of America eagles. And then this one is Fort Moultrie. I don't know how to say words correctly, but it's cool. Anyways, back to the problem. So let's try counting forwards first. What it means is we count from how much we had to pay and that to how much we actually paid to see how much coins are in cents are in between. So let's do let's count from sixty eight to seventy five. And we know it's seventy five because each quarter is twenty five cents and there's three of them, so twenty five times three is seventy five. Anyways, back to counting. So we have 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, and 75. Meaning we have to get seven cents change back from whoever we pay. And now let's try the counting backward technique. That's basically subtraction. 
And how we're going to do that is we're just going to do 75 minus 68, and that's 7. And there you go. So now let's move on to our first problem. And it says, using only pennies, nickels, and dimes, how many ways are there to make a quarter? So I made an entire chart for us. And the easiest way to do it is just list out all the possible ways in a nice, neat, organized fashion. This is probably not that organized, and I'm sure you guys should be more organized because it's going to be on paper, but this is sort of okay. Anyways, so we want a total of 25 cents because a quarter is equal to 25 cents. So we start off with 25 pennies, and then we slowly decrease our number of pennies and adjust nickels and dimes accordingly so we get a total of 25. So we have 20 and then one nickel, 15 pennies, two nickels, zero dimes, 15 pennies, zero nickels, one dime, since two nickels is equal to one dime, 10 pennies, three nickels, zero dimes, 10 pennies, one nickel, one dime. We exchange two of our nickels for a dime. Five pennies, four nickels, zero dimes. Five pennies, two nickels, one dime. Five pennies, zero nickels, two dimes. Zero pennies, five nickels, zero dimes. Zero pennies, three nickels, one dime. Zero pennies, one nickel, and two dimes. And counting up all these ways, we have our answer, which is 12. Now, our next problem is the following. Amy buys a comic book for the same price each week. Last week she used she only used quarters. This week she only used dimes. If she used nine extra coins this week, how much was the book? Okay, so let's understand the problem first, because it may be a bit confusing. So what it's saying is that we have a comic book and it has a certain price, which is what we're trying to find. Anyways, um we have our girl Amy. And one week she buys it with only quarters, and the next week she buys it with only dimes. And the clue or the hint that the problem gave us is that the number of coins she used increased by nine. So that's what the problem means. Let's try doing it. So let's do a bit of a ratio first. Two quarters is equal to five dimes, since they're both equal to 50 cents. The difference between the number of coins in this is 3, but we want the difference between the number of coins to be 9. So we're going to multiply all of these by 3. So 6 quarters, because 2 times 3 is 6, is equal to 15 dimes, since 5 times 3 is 15, which is equal to $1.50, since 50 cents times 3 is equal to $1.50. And just to check it real quick, 15 minus 6 is equal to 9, which is our difference. And these two are equal, which satisfies that the book is the same price. Now for our last problem, which is, if you spend one cent every second, how much money would you spend in an Agora math circle class? So as you all know, or most of you know, an Agora math circle class is three hours. And we did, we did time in our previous class. So we know that one hour is 60 minutes. So, 3 times 60 is 180, and in each minute, we have 60 seconds. So, 180 times another 60 is equal to 10,800 seconds. So, that means there's 10,800 seconds in an Agora Math Circle class. So, we're going to multiply that by 1 because we're spending 1 cent each of those 10,800 seconds, and we get our answer, which is 10,800 cents, or if you want to write it as with the dollar sign, you divide it by 100 and you get $108. Don't forget to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, you can email info at agoramatrical.org or comment below and we'll reply back. Maybe. And if you want to see practice things or anything about us, you can visit our website, which is basically the end of the email, but without the info. And yeah, so bye.